ABC Kinder Teach presents Groundhog Weather School, written by Joan Holub, illustrated by Kristen Sora. Happy Groundhog Day, everyone! I do not see my shadow. That means spring is here. Yahoo! Spring is here! Sun and fun, here I come! <sighs> I guess it's really hard to predict the weather. And this is what a groundhog really looks like. Dear Weather Groundhog, You were wrong. Spring is not here yet. Maybe you are too far away to predict, guess what will happen, the weather everywhere. Could you please get more groundhogs to help you next year? Signed, Rabbit. Hmm, Rabbit's right. I do need some help. But how will I find enough other groundhogs to help me predict the weather all over North America? North America includes the United States, Canada, and Mexico. And he puts an ad in the newspaper that says, Have you got what it takes to be a weather forecaster? Someone who guesses what will happen with the weather. Take this quiz and check all that apply. Are you a mammal? If you are warm-blooded, have a backbone, and drank milk as a baby, you probably are. So mammals are warm-blooded, they have a backbone, and they drank milk as a baby. We did all that stuff. We are a mammal. Are you furry? You be the judge. Do you live in a burrow? If you live in a hole or a tunnel dug in the ground, check this box. So a burrow is really a hole or a tunnel dug in the ground. Are you a rodent? If you have two front teeth that never stop growing, you probably are. Are you an herbivore? That is, if you only eat plants, you are. Do you hibernate? If you sleep for months at a time each winter, you're a hibernator alrighty. If you checked all six boxes, you're invited to attend Groundhog Weather School. So, mammal, furry, live in a burrow, rodent, herbivore, hibernate. The news travels fast. Check. No, 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 no. So, the pig only has one thing that he can check, which is that he's a mammal. Check. Check. Nuh-uh. 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 So the monkey only has two. Check. 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 Nope. 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 So the skunk has three. No fair. I bet a skunk could forecast the weather too. Check. 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 Rats. Rats. The rat has four. Check. 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 Hibernate. Darn. This one has five. Check. Check. Check, 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 check. Yay, I'm going to Groundhog Weather School. So this is a groundhog. Welcome to your first day at Groundhog Weather School class. Let's begin by saying the pledge. Pledge of hog allegiance, as in groundhog. We, the students of Groundhog Weather School, pledge to come out of our burrows on February 2nd to look for our shadows and to remember that if we don't see our shadows, it means spring is here. If we do see our shadows, it means there'll be six more weeks of winter. I see my shadow when it's sunny, but why would sunny weather mean more cold winter weather is coming? I don't get it. And this one's sleeping. He must be hibernating. It says here that a sunny winter day may be extra cold because there is no cloud blanket to trap the sun's warmth near the ground. Shadows? Nobody said anything about shadows. Dark, creepy shadows. 
cool hair, dude. But are you sure you're a groundhog? Um, I'm a foreign exchange student. He's not a groundhog. He's a skunk pretending to be a groundhog. Groundhog minus shadow equals spring. Groundhog plus shadow equals winter. Will that be on the test? Geography. And that's really like saying geography, which is the study of the land, water, sky, and living things. Class, please tell us about yourselves. We're the only animals with a holiday named after us. Are you forgetting Turkey Day? Gee, my name is Groundhog. I'm smaller than a beaver, but bigger than a squirrel, and I weigh ten pounds. We watch out for these predators. Coyote, fox, dog, wolf, bobcat, hawk, owl, eagle, a human. Oh, well, there's a lot. My eyes, ears, and nose are good danger detectors. Know when something is nearby. If a predator is near, I run for my burrow. I can't run fast, only about 10 miles per hour, which is probably about as fast as we could run. Squirrels, chipmunks, and prairie dogs are our relatives. We're all part of a big rodent family called marmots. Most of us live in areas that get very cold in winter, like the northeast or central part of the United States and in Canada. Groundhog Day began here in Pennsylvania. We dig holes and eat farm crops. So some states don't allow groundhogs except for graduates of Groundhog Weather School, of course. Like most groundhogs in the northeastern United States, I prefer to be called a woodchuck. In the Appalachian Mountains, groundhogs are called whistle pigs because we whistle to warn other groundhogs of danger. Well done, class. Now, let's visit the library. Research reports are due on the next page. Famous... Furry Hognosticators, Poxitani Phil, Poxitani, Pennsylvania, made his first weather prediction in 1886, met U.S. President Ronald Reagan, starred in a movie called Groundhog Day. Weirton Willie, Weirton, Ontario, Canada, a rare white albino groundhog with pink eyes. And albino usually just means they have white hair and pink eyes and probably a pink nose. Tries to predict which football team will win the Super Bowl. Gets visitors from as far away as Pakistan. That's a long ways. General Beauregard Lee, Lilburn, Georgia, lives in a small white house at the Yellow River Game Ranch. Has been on the Today Show and on Animal Planet has an honorary college degree, which means a college said, you are so smart, we're going to say that you graduated from college. Jimmy the Groundhog, Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, is visited by as many as 500 people each Groundhog Day, has a weather hotline, visits Wisconsin schools. Buckeye Chuck, Marion, Ohio, the official Ohio State Groundhog lives in a comfy straw-lined box in a park, visits a radio station on Groundhog Day to give his weather forecast. Pierre C. Shadow, New Iberia, Louisiana, is really a nutria, a rodent with webbed feet and a long tail that lives in marshland or swamps, has a Cajun-style house which is moved to the Bolini Plaza Park each year for a big Groundhog Day celebration. Staten Island Chuck, Staten Island, New York, has a house with a thermometer in the roof, lives at the Staten Island Zoo. Ice statues of him are carved on February 2nd. Sir Walter Wally, not Raleigh, but Wally, from Raleigh, North Carolina, 
in the week before Groundhog Day, kids record their weather observations when the mayor announces Wally's weather forecast at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. Kids watch to see if Wally's prediction turns out to be right. Nature's Weather Predictors Some plants and animals can help predict the weather. A tree's leaves can predict storms. Leaves curl upward so their underside shows if there is moisture in the air and a strong wind is blowing. Cows don't like wind blowing in their faces, so they stand with their backsides to the wind. Winds blowing from the west usually bring good weather, so if a cow's tail is turned toward the west, it often means good weather is coming. Wet honeybees are too heavy to fly. They stay near their hive if rain is coming. If a pine cone's leaves fold inward, it may rain. In dry weather, they fold outward. Achoo! Moo! Moo to you, too! Impressive! Weather men, Luke Howard, created a system for classifying and naming different cloud shapes. It includes cumulus, cirrus, and stratus. Wilson Snowflake Bentley was a farmer in Vermont who took thousands of pictures of individual snowflakes. This helped scientists understand how snowflakes form. Evangelista Torricelli invented the barometer which measures air pressure. If air is not pressing hard against the earth, it's called a low pressure system. That often means it will rain. Can you guess what a high pressure system means? Probably that it will be sunny. Professor Theodore Fujita was nicknamed Mr. Tornado because he helped figure out how to measure the wind speed inside a tornado. Lunchtime, everyone! Be sure you hog out or eat a lot. It's important to add as much fat to our bodies as we can before hibernation begins. Today's lunch menu, alfalfa salad, carrot soup, scallion soup, fruit cup, fresh fruit, vegetarian plate, clover surprise, cup of seeds. It's all vegetables and plants. Why do we have to hibernate in the winter? Yeah, I'm not sleepy. We hibernate for four or five months between October and March because it's cold and food is hard to find. During hibernation, we are in a deep sleep. Our heartbeats slow down, our body temperatures drop, and we only breathe about once every four minutes. We don't need to eat because we live off the fat our bodies have stored. So eat up, groundhogs. My friend Frog hibernates at the bottom of a stream where the water doesn't freeze. My friend Bat hibernates in a cave with her wings tucked close to keep her warm. How to build a burrow. 1. Dig a hole in the ground to make your front door. There it is. Keep digging. Chomp through any roots. This will help wear down your claws and teeth so they don't grow too long. So when they're hibernating or sleeping, their claws and their teeth will continue to grow. So if they make them short before they go to sleep, they won't grow too long. We can dig about five feet in one day. If you want a simple burrow, dig about 15 feet of tunnel. If you want a fancy one, dig up to 40 feet. Wow, that's a long ways. Make a few rooms along the way, such as a bedroom, a bathroom, and a storeroom for snacks. The Reasons for Seasons We have a surprise for you, Professor. A skit about seasons. In North America, a year is divided into four seasons of three months each. The seasons are winter, spring, summer, and fall. 
in winter. I begin around December 21st at the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year. I'm spring. I begin around March 21st at the spring equinox, when day and night are the same length. I'm summer. I begin around June 21st at the summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year. I'm fall. I begin around September 21st at the fall equinox when day and night are the same length. So equinoxes are when days and nights are the same length, which means the day is as long as the night. And solstices are when the days are either the shortest or longest. Oh, there are two reasons why we have seasons. Planet Earth orbits, goes around the sun. The Earth is tilted. The equator is an imaginary line that divides Earth into two halves called hemispheres. When a hemisphere tilts toward the sun, it's warmer as in summer. When it tilts away, it's colder as in winter. Wonderful! I'm so proud of you! Shadow Studies On February 2nd, we will look for our shadows. Can anyone tell me what a shadow is? A dark, scary monster that chases me? I know. It's the shade that's made when something blocks out the light, right? If there's a solar eclipse on Groundhog Day, will we get a do-over? Move far from the light to make a small shadow. Come close to the light to make a big shadow. At night, there are no shadows because there's no sunlight. Looks hogging the flashlight. Excellent! I think you're all ready for the final exam. The Big Test, a multiple choice quiz. Please circle the right answer. Well, let's take a look at the answers ahead of time. What day do you come out of your burrow? On your birthday? Nope. On February 2nd? Yep. On February 32nd? That is not a day, so it's February 2nd. What do you look for when you come out? A, a valentine? No. A shadow? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. A pot of gold? I wish. But nope, it's a shadow. If you see it, see answer to number two. Oh, shadow. What does it mean? Spring is here. Summer vacation is here. Six more weeks of winter. Well, it's going to be six more weeks of winter if you see your shadow. If you don't see it, what does it mean? You are invisible? No. Spring is here? Mm-hmm. Six more years of school? Who knows? It's spring is here. Whether you see it or not, what's the next thing you do? Go back to sleep? Mm -mm. Have a snack? Mm, no. Report the results to Groundhog Headquarters. Yes, for sure. Graduation day. Yay, I passed! Me too. I'm going to New York to check the weather. I got Florida. What a cinch. It'll be spring for sure. Yahoo! I'll be doing Texas. Get to your post, graduates, and start hibernating. Remember to set your alarm clocks for February 2nd. We'll be awaiting your shadow reports. October, Columbus Day, Texas is sleeping. New York, sleeping. Florida, sleeping. California, sleeping. November, Thanksgiving, sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. Eating, yum, because he doesn't hibernate, right? December, Christmas, Hanukkah. Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. For me, I shouldn't have. And the skunk who does not hibernate bought himself a gift and said, oh, I shouldn't have bought myself a gift. And he's just being funny. January, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. It's almost time. So he's tired of waiting around. Because he can't hibernate like the other ones. February 2nd, wake up, it's Groundhog Day. 
Alarm clock goes off, alarm clock goes off, alarm clock goes off, and the skunk says, at last! It's February 2nd at school headquarters. Weather reports are coming in from every Groundhog Weather School graduate. Will there be more winter, or is it time for spring? Hello, Groundhog Weather School here. What's your report? Does seeing a shadow and lightning count? Shh, shadow. Ah, choo, no sedato. I see a dog, does that count? The results are in, I'll rush them over to the professor. Yep, that's a skunk shadow you're seeing, folks. Zzz. This one slipped in from Texas. I see fog, but no shadow. How can I see my shadow without my glasses? He's looking for his glasses. My shadow is divine. I wish you could see it. Happy Groundhog Day, everyone. I had some help this year from the graduates of Groundhog Weather School. Most of us saw our shadows, including me, so it's a sure bet that winter will last for six more weeks. Professor Groundhog took my advice and got some help. He's sure to be right this time. I'm going sledding. So he goes out the door. He gets out and goes, <sighs> and the bird goes, hmm, what's going on here? Because he's all dressed up and it looks nice out. I guess it's really, really hard to predict the weather. How did Groundhog Day get started? Long ago, farmers in Europe watched for badgers and bears to wake up from hibernation hoping this indicated that winter had ended. If spring was coming, it would be safe to plant crops without worrying they might freeze. When these farmers settled in Pennsylvania in the 1700s, a long time ago, there were lots of groundhogs around, so the farmers began watching them wake up instead. But why choose February 2nd? Ancient Romans and other past civilizations could hardly wait for warm spring weather to arrive. February 2nd comes about halfway between the shortest day of the year, December 21st, and the beginning of spring, March 21st, so it was a good day to celebrate the coming season. In North America, these February 2nd celebrations became Groundhog Day. Who's better at predicting the weather, a groundhog or you? Groundhog weather predictions are only right about one-third of the time, which means they may be right and then they might be wrong the next two times. But it's fun to celebrate Groundhog Day and watch for winter to eventually turn into spring. This February 2nd, do you hope spring will come right away or do you hope winter lasts longer? I want spring. Which do you think will happen? Write down your prediction and see if it comes true. Marmota Monax. The... Groundhog has small ears, sensory whiskers, which means its whiskers can sense things around it, a bulky body, brown-gray hair, a short tail, four fingers, sharp claws, and about 17 inches tall. <laughs>